Okay, hi everybody. It's 4.30, we're gonna get started. Thank you for joining us, thank you for being here. Uh, I'm Shannon, one of the course directors here at Jack's Diving Walker, Shannon Shea. Uh, and I'm here with my colleague. Hello everybody. Welcome, welcome to our q and I'm very excited to see you guys. My name is David, David Pinilla. I'm the other course director for Jack's Diving Locker, two for the price of one. And in the chat, just Oh yeah, and uh, if you can hear us okay, if you don't mind, if you'd write something in the chat, let us know that, that would be super great. And if you could be sure to mute yourself, everybody, that would be beautiful as well. All right, thank you, Cliff. Yeah, Cliff can hear us. Yay, Cliff. We're gonna give everybody uh, one extra minute to make sure that everybody's signing in, making sure that everybody has their computers, their phones ready, their cameras so they can take pictures of us. Yay. <laughs> okay, it sounds like people can hear us. That's good. Anyone? Right. So, well, let's uh, let's begin once again. Welcome everybody to our our second Q and A. Circle Q and A, very popular second Q and A. Yes, David and I are very excited about our uh, blossoming careers as media influencers. It is very exciting. <laughs> this is very, very exciting. So it's uh, December 14th, Wednesday. Oh, it's Wednesday. Hump Shadow day. is hump day. Woo, hump day. Hey, speaking of hump day, hmm. you know what is around now around Hawaii? Humpback whales, David. Humpback whales. So it's very exciting. We just saw started about two days ago. That's when we started seeing more regularly. So very exciting. This is gonna be a nice winter. Seeing all these whales makes me super excited. Absolutely. I just saw my second one of the season yesterday, as a oh, matter of fact. Wow, lucky you. Mm -hmm. I have not seen any whale yet. Oh. But I'm looking forward for it. Great. Yeah, okay, so we've got a presentation we're going to uh, work our way through. Um, as we go along, if you have questions, please uh, put them into the chat. We'll do our very best to be monitoring that and um, uh, respond to them uh, as they come in. And uh, yeah, so feel free to uh, ask us anything that comes to mind. And of course, if there's anything during the presentation that we don't address, um, we'll be sharing the best way to contact us uh, via email and such after the presentation is over. All right. So let's get these rolling. Okay, go. Let's see. Oh, here we go. How to become a scuba instructor in paradise. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. How to become a scuba instructor in paradise. Right on that picture, you see traffic jam. That's what we call a traffic jam. So today, what are we going to talk about today? We're gonna talk about the role as a dive master and, and the role as an open water scuba instructor. Mm -hmm. um, a day in the life of an open water scuba instructor. Yep. We're also gonna talk about the different opportunities that you guys can have as a professional scuba divers. And then we'll talk about why specifically we think that you should conduct your training here with us at Jack Diving Walker. And uh, let's just roll into it. So here we have uh, the path to the pros. So this, in, in this presentation, you guys can see what is the, the path that you will start or continue to be like us. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you know, we all started as uh, recreational divers. Did one dive, got hooked into that and then kept moving, learning more, learning more how to be a better diver, self sufficient diver, if you could call it, then as a group, you know, how to be a good partner in the group. And then eventually you start doing the rescue parts of the class, how to help others. And then it will be the jump from recreational into the professional path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you'd like in the comments, if everybody would like to let us know what your current certification level is, that would be interesting to know. So we can find out how many 
dive masters aspiring to be instructors or how many open water divers who are just thinking about maybe going further. Um, that would be great. We have some master scuba diver trainers. Okay, right on. Nice. The next step will be IDC staff instructor. Ooh. Oh, some dive masters. Karen, open water scuba instructor. All right. Rescue diver now. Okay. Dive master. Ooh, oh, be. rescue dive now signed up for our dive master. Oh, Charles, hello. I sent you an email earlier today. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> it was like two hours before the speeding and you did it. Yay. All right, Robert Smith, rescue diver. Okay, great. Wonderful. So everybody's at a fairly advanced uh, stage in their dive education. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Already made it further than most divers do. I think it's something really small, like five to 3% of divers That's ever right. make it as far as rescue diver. So if you've gotten that far, you're already in a very uh, elite tier. <laughs> and they will be just the last step. Well, not the last step, the next step to jump into. So for rescue diver, um, the next step will be dive master. That will be the first, the first, um, introduction into the professional path mm -hmm. yeah that gets you set up to do things like discover scuba diving uh internship and uh to teach some programs like uh reactivate that sort of thing to work with divers who are uh refreshing and then once you bump up to uh instructor then of course that's when you can work with divers who are not yet certified and get them certified um, and if you really love it, um, then there's, of course, staff instructor, master instructor, and uh, the true crazies, course directors. <laughs> All right. I think we can move along. Oh, you roll as a dive master. So Chanel was already talking about the role as a dive master, what the dive masters can do. It's, a, it's really cool to be a dive master. We actually just finished... Um, a couple of weeks ago, a dive master course and seeing these guys now working and acting as a professional is really, really nice. We have, um, if I can name names, Sierra, she, you know, seeing her just becoming a dive master and now she's actually over there on the boats working as a dive master is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Seeing that transition. Uh, as a dive master right now, you know, the role of the dive master is leading certified divers. Uh, not just that, you know, there are certain specialties that a dive master can actually teach independently, certain programs that they can go independently. So it's pretty cool, you know. Obviously, once you become an open water scuba instructor, there is way more opportunities, but that's a really nice entry level. Mm -hmm. For sure. And then the roles of, uh, oh, there you go, the dive master. Oh, look at those handsome people. <laughs> It's okay, we can move on. <laughs> and then open water in school is talked That's um, you know, that on that slide we can see um, a huge role of the instructors, hmm. you know, in the pool. That's where we learn, that's where we get comfortable with the scuba gear, with the skills to eventually move up into into the real world, the ocean. But that's a very good step you know one thing that i would like to mention about the role of a school instructor and a dive master is we always want to be in the water we always want to be out there in the ocean in the boat dealing with all of this but for example i'm just coming out of a cold right so i couldn't be diving i couldn't dive uh, so well we'll take the day off stay at home don't work that was not the thing so another thing as a professional is that if you can dive like me with sinuses, old luggage, I could still come to work and work on the retail. Work with the customers, helping them choosing the best course, choosing, uh, helping them choose the best BCD gear, all of this. So it's, it's an opportunity that I was just thinking this morning. It's like, man, in which other work? He's like, well, you know, I can't work because I'm sick. You can still come and do other stuff. That's pretty, pretty awesome, I think. So that was, that was nice. <laughs> yeah, so working as an open water scuba instructor, of course, there's pool work. There's also classroom dry classes. Like uh, once you become a, able to teach some specialties, you can do things like equipment specialist. 
You can teach the EFR class, which is the class that's, uh, you know, the CPR and first aid skills that's required for anybody who's doing rescue diver. Um, here at Jackson, you might even find yourself uh, snorkel guiding. So there's a lot of variety. Snorkel guiding, like one of our instructors, Joe, um, he's on the back fixing regulators mm -hmm. and dealing with tanks. So a lot of opportunities, not just in the water. Again, if you can dive because you're here so often, there is still opportunities for all of us to keep us busy, to keep us learning. It, it's great. We're gonna talk about um, what is an instructor development course? Right. How do you become an instructor? Yeah. So how do you become an instructor? To become an instructor, too easy. You come to us and we teach you how to do it. Yeah, we hang out for like two weeks and then you're an instructor. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously, you know, there's the, the whole um, theory behind. And then um, we take the instructor development course. And that's where Shannon and I will lead you through techniques, skills on how to teach. Yeah, yeah, and I think one of the most important aspects of the IBC is it familiarizes you with the resources that Patty provides for all of their instructors. Because you're not supposed to reinvent the wheel every time you're trying to teach a class. Patty has got curriculum, resources, teaching techniques. Um, you know, you can pick up the phone and call HQ if you have questions. Um, and learning how to access all of this information, which of course nobody expects you to memorize. Man, I don't even have it memorized. I got to look up stuff. Um, is part of what the IDC does is it makes sure that you know what resources are available to you and how to access them. Because of course, once you're certified as an instructor, it's not like you're teaching the dive master class every other weekend. So if you need to explore the best teaching techniques and remind yourself of exactly what's in, uh, required for the dive master class, all those materials and resources exist. Patty has them for you to access and you're gonna learn how to do that during the IDC. Yeah, basically knowing where to find information how to organize your class, how to um, you know, teach in confined water versus in the ocean or other open water environments, because of course there's a difference in uh, concern for safety, you know, a lot more factors at play in open water than right. confined yeah. water. Um, and uh, you know, how to be the best role model diver you can be, all of that good stuff. And how to you know, foster a positive learning environment for your students because some days it's harder than others. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> now in the structure examination, um, after you spend time with us, when we will lead you through what well, we just talked about it, then you will have to take an instructor examination. That's a two day course where basically you go and show an examiner what you have learned from us. Mm -hmm. um, the knowledge on the PADI standards, the knowledge on the procedures, the classroom, how to teach in the classroom. Channel was talking about that, you know, we teach in the swimming pool, we teach in the ocean. Classroom is a huge part of, of teaching as well. So how to conduct those sessions in the classroom, how to properly conduct it in the pool, the swimming pool, and of course, out there in the open water. It doesn't have to be ocean all the time. It's true. I, I hear that there are people in this world who have open water bodies that are not the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> you know what, I had, uh, was it a few days ago, three, four, five days ago, I had this family, certified diver, four of them, mom, dad, and then two kids, certified. Each one of them had 30 dives, mm -hmm. never in the ocean. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah, yeah. They are from um, the mainland in the middle. Okay. okay. Perhaps Utah. Oh. Or Idaho. But there's other bodies of water that you can still dive. So I was like, what? Never been in the ocean 30 dives? And I was like, oh, well, actually, you know, there's sinkholes and quarries, quarries, and so hot springs, lakes. Uh, so really cool. So not just in the ocean, you will learn how to conduct these dives in open water mm -hmm. out there in, in bigger ponds of water. Yeah. Diving skills, rescue. You know, you with the rescue diver, we have some of divers over there that are rescue divers. Um, that's something that we never want to 
use those skills, but we always want to keep them fresh. Mm -hmm. uh, and with these, you know, you do the rescue course, you learn all those skills, you go to that master, you put those skills and you refine those skills, you go to the instructor, refine, double refine those skills. Mm -hmm. And once you become an instructor, Shannon mentioned it earlier, teaching the EFR close, the emergency first responder course. That's how I refresh my skills. Yeah. Never use them in real life, but I have them ready for their if necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the instructor examination, the format of that exam, which is going to you know, ask you to demonstrate your familiarity with all of these things we've been discussing. The format of that exam is exactly the same as our IDC. So by the time you get to the exam, you're being asked to do things that David and I have already asked you to do in exactly the same way that we have asked you to do them. And um, the, the questions that and, um, you know, specific problems are going to be uh, asked about are usually things that you've already prepared and done uh, as part of our class. So by the time you get to the IE, you're really just doing a thing that probably if we've done our job right, you are already tired of, bored of, and able to do without having to think too hard. You just have to show the examiner that that is the case. Yeah, uh, so matter of fact. Not bored of, but you know, familiar with. No longer stressed out by. Yeah. Um, Every time, it happens to me every time, it happens to us all the time that when our candidates, they finish the course, they're so stressed, they're going to the examination, they pass and they come back, it's like, that was super easy. That was super easy. Wow. And it's because, you know, we train to get to there, to make it easy, to make it wow. you know, possible. Yeah, students always say the IDC is more challenging than the exam itself. So yeah. We'll uh, make sure that you're prepared for that exam. All right. Now, Anything more I want to say about the IE? No, then, you know, once you become the, an instructor, you pass that examination, then what to do now? Mm. What to do now? And as I said, oh, you know, I'm going to move to a landlocked state, country. Uh, I can't use my skills anymore. Uh, 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 uh. You can still die. You know, just find a body of water. And go diving travel the world travel the world if you ask me uh, i like traveling and i've been around the world and i mentioned these to shannon earlier it's like when you become an instructor you get a new passport and your passport is your instructor certification card and yeah. um, if you ever thought about hey you know i would like to i would like to go to japan and see how that is get a job there and then you will be in Japan working as an instructor. Mm. So, Debbie, oh, we've gotten a question in the Questions. chat um, about the specifics of our IDC and the IE. So to circle back just a little bit for you, Charles, um, the IDC, the way we organize it is it's a 10 day course, but we don't put it all 10 days in a row. We teach it either as weekends, five weekends, or we teach it as a five day course with a one day interval with um, another five days. And then of course, an additional day for EFR instructor, which is taught on a separate day from the class. So it's really, our IDC is 10 days plus a day of the EFR class. Um, then we take another day off before you sit the IE, which is a two day program conducted by a PADI examiner. And that's going to have a classroom, a confined water and an open water component. But all of that is mirrored exactly by the IDC. So um, our program is a 10 day program, as I mentioned, either five days on a day off, five days on EFR, followed by the IE, or you can do it two weekends, uh, sorry, two days for five weekends. Correct. We have two options. So if you're trying to work a nine to five or go to school, or if you're working remotely, um, then you can do the IDC with us weekends only. Yep. And then uh, I just see another question of it there. There is an online portion for mm -hmm. this class. That way, when you come to us, you already have some knowledge of what is going to happen. So it's easier to jump straight in and navigate those waters. So yeah, there is um, an online portion. I would say maybe about 16 hours, what do you reckon? Yeah, there are 16 sections and I would say you wanna budget half an hour to an hour for each section. 
Yeah, that's about right. And you can sprinkle it around through your, uh, you know, your, if you start it soon enough, you know, like a month before the IDC, for example, you know, you can do a half hour here and there after work or on a lunch break or while you're waiting for the train or whatever you want to do um, and uh, chip away at it gradually so that you're. Yeah. And then one thing is um, once you sign up for the class, you will be doing your online independently, right? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean like you own your house by yourself. Like, oh, I don't understand any of this. As soon as you sign up, we are yours. So you go, we're going to be having you. You're going to be having us. You're doing your online. It's like, I don't understand this. Well, contact us. That's what we are here for. And immediately we'll be like, oh, this is easy. And we can just guide you and lead you to those, lead you through those waters to make sure that you are a success at the end. Yeah, so you just had a question about um, how long that whole process takes. Um, 15 to 20 days stay on the island. Yes, that's that's adequate for the IDC and the IE. If you time it right, that's that's exactly what you need. Uh, remember, uh, Kona, huge for mantas. We have the Blackwater Pelagic mm -hmm. Magic. So... Why not three weeks? Yeah, I was going to say, you might want to leave yourself time to do some dives that aren't part of your ah, dive fine. education. But yeah. Come earlier, have a couple of dives, enjoy it. After the, the whole oh, stress of having Shannon yelling at you, I yell sometimes too. Then go and do a fun dive. Nobody else. No, no, we're nice. Um, but yeah, I would say 15 days... 20 yeah. days on the island is, is plenty of time for you mm -hmm. to complete all of these. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so um, we are good with the question. I'm going to jump back into what's out there. So uh, work outside in nature. You know, we we're just talking about the whales. It's just so beautiful to have those creatures around. Yeah. You're know, listening on the water. You're diving. You're looking at an octopus and suddenly something comes from behind it. He's woo! And you're like, ah! This is amazing. Yeah, you know, I've been a teacher of other things, David, and uh, I always enjoyed teaching, but what I realized is I don't really enjoy classrooms. So teaching in the pool, teaching in the ocean, I like teaching, I do. I was wrong before when I thought I didn't like teaching. I just didn't like classrooms. This is, being a dive instructor is way better. When you fill up your classroom with water and fishes. Mm, it's better. It's a nice classroom. Yeah. It's way better with fish. It's a nice classroom. <laughs> Heather feels me. Great. She, you and me are going to get along. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, be a part of a global community. Here in Jax, we have people from pretty much all over the world. It's true. There, we have um, divers from Colombia. Those uh -huh. guys are very good divers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Italian people. <laughs> right? We have people from Italy. And Las Vegas. And Las Vegas. And exotic Cincinnati. Uh, who's from Cincinnati? <laughs> well, Jeff is from Cincinnati. Oh, okay. And Jeannie is also from the Midwest. Are St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. What do I know about Midwestern cities? Uh, but, you know, not just that, but also people coming from outside the world coming to you. It's so true. you have that interaction from, you know, these uh, people from parts of the world that you would never think that you will have any contact at all. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. Yeah. The world loves to dive. Lifetime friends. Absolutely. You know, when you share that passion of scuba diving with somebody else, it's just so easy to make friends. It's just so easy to, to throw up a conversation and start talking about whales, start talking about the orca. So just the simple nudie brand that you saw. It's just amazing, amazing. Oh, yeah. Don't get me started talking about fish. We'll be here all day. <laughs> But I want to see this picture over here. Wear your best suit to work. Oh, look at that. <laughs> the, right now, I'm wearing actually my best suit. It's winter in Hawaii. The water is 78 degrees. <laughs> I had to pull out my best suit, which is my 7 mil wetsuit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only use in winter. So actually, just like in the normal states, we go through different seasons. Mm -hmm. And now I pull my winter clothes. Yeah. Absolutely. Your, your boots and your scarf and your hat <laughs> dive equivalent. Yeah. All right. So a few more fun things about being a professional scuba diver opportunities for career progression. So once you are certified as an instructor, you can also get certified to teach 
specialties. So if you love photography and want to share your love of photography, you can become a digital underwater photography instructor. If you love cave diving and you want to teach cave diving or wreck diving or deep diving or underwater navigation there are just so many specialties that you as an instructor um, can you know diversify into and then you can teach the thing that you love i am not much of an underwater uh, photographer. I haven't touched a camera in 10 years. I don't want to teach the photography class, but come to me for peak performance buoyancy. Let's talk. I got lots to say. I love the peak performance buoyancy class. It's my very favorite thing to teach uh, because it makes such a difference to people's experience of diving and sets them up for success with other skills like photography, which they can learn from someone else. Um, so yeah, if you have something that, you know, sparks your interest, when you become a specialty instructor in that discipline, then you can spend a lot of your time doing the kind of diving that you in particular love. Dive against debris, shark, special, shark specialty. There's just so many, there's a huge menu of things. Whatever you love, you can become a teacher of. Yeah, and you know, speaking of that, we have, I was just talking to this person and she is studying to, or she, her plan is to become a marine biologist. Mm -hmm. So in her preparation, she's becoming a dive master. Mm -hmm. Just to have the knowledge as a diver, to bring that knowledge as a safety diver out into the more um, scientific diver. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's another way if you can do it or either become a scientific diver and get tired of the old scientific names and come and just call the names like the blue fish. Yeah, if you don't want to call it a... Uh, zebrasoma flavescence, then you can just call it a yellow tang. <laughs> um, changing lives, you know, something that I love about diving is not everybody's a diver, not everybody can be a diver, but with your help, with our help, and obviously they're, you know, want to do it, they can still do it. You know, they can still do it. One of my best um, diving dives that I've done that I changed somebody was I diving with a blind person oh interesting yeah um, very very interesting challenging and I was like why is this person you know they can't see the beauty that we can't see right they wanted to experience it in a different way and I got chills just talking about it and it was amazing just being on being able to go down and being able to help this person conquer that you know this person is like look I just want to be down there listening to feel it in my skin it was just priceless 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 i mean it is literally an immersive experience yeah and then that and kids you know we love kids, I love kids. I love um <laughs> but like you know when you have somebody young that you can actually change the way they feel change the way they look at the ocean change the way they, they know about the ocean and make them realize that, you know, we need to take care of our oceans. Mm -hmm. That's something that not just us, but everybody can help. Yeah. I mean, seeing those kids going out there and getting excited about picking a little piece of trash from the beach, telling their parents, no, 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 you know, don't put that kind of sun cream because that's going to affect their, their ribs. Mm -hmm. And then if my son comes to me and tells me, don't do that, dad, that's somebody I will listen to because I will feel ashamed. So, yeah, so if you cool. enjoy working with kids, um, there's certainly plenty of opportunities, particularly here at Jack's Diving Walker in the summer. So if anybody wants to be a <laughs> scuba dive instructor with a summer job teaching kids camps, uh, we got that going on here. Um, and we also have a number of programs that are really, really popular. We have um, harbor cleanups uh, mm -hmm. that happen quarterly uh, in uh, cooperation with the Ocean, Def Ocean Defenders Alliance. Uh, and I think you can see one of the photos up there of all of the tires yeah. and craziness that they pulled out of our harbor. Man, that activity is so popular. Members of our dive club, local divers, even people who are here, um, you know, from like Alberta, Canada, I was teaching a rescue class with some regular divers who come to see us. Okay. Um, and they were just so disappointed that the timing of their trip didn't work out for them to do the harbor cleanup. And I mean, I was really surprised. People want to travel to go pull rubbish out of a harbor uh in hawaii and I, it had never occurred to me that that was a draw but it is people love it you can do that it is very rewarding you know when you look and it's like oh, it's so nasty and then you remove all that and then it looks nice and you start mm -hmm. seeing 
these creatures that are living over there, oh, yeah. it is better than water. People really love the harbor cleanup stuff. It's amazing. So satisfying. Okay. Oh, we have a question. We have a question. Opportunities to participate in research programs, Manta, Shark, et cetera. Okay. Yes, there are some of those. Um, specifically here at Jack's Diving Locker, um, one of our uh, crew members, Keller Leros, is um, one of the founding members of the Manta Pacific Research Institute. They keep a catalog of the manta rays, and they're actually even branching out into um, starting to get uh, or try to get um, DNA samples from members of the population so that, you know, more research can be done about the, you know, the familiar lineages and the um, DNA and the population and all of that kind of stuff. So um, there's, um, there's that, I mean, that we have going on practically in-house because Keller is here and is one of our, um, one of our instructors. Uh, there are a few other opportunities. Um, there's, uh, if you spot a, for example, if you spot a whale shark and you photo photograph it and submit uh, the, the photograph, there is a local nonprofit that's working to catalog and identify the um, whale sharks that we see. Um, and we do, I mean, I know that some of our um, crew members are also diving uh, part-time, for example, um, doing fish surveys for the Division of Aquatic Resources, which is a division of the Department of Land and Natural Resources here in Hawaii, um, and, you know, getting involved with um, some science. So, yes, there's crossover. There's absolutely crossover. Yeah, um, I did a... Um a program with the Royal Air Force, the English Royal Air Force tagging hammerhead sharks. Oh, yeah. How fun. Yeah, there was just a bunch of scientists. They wanted to do it and they needed Air to Air Force scientists. Yes. Tagging sharks. Who knew? <laughs> they just came back from Antarctica <laughs> doing some other thing. You know what you have in, in, in case we encounter yeah. hammerheads in the air. He said Royal Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you the article, Royal Air Force. And then um, one of their programs was tagging hammerhead sharks. Mm -hmm. And they needed to have, you know, support divers, mm -hmm. help the, the scientists go in the water and shooting at the sharks, well, sh tagging the sharks. <laughs> that was very exciting. Well, you shoot at a shark, but nicely shooting. Right. It's like, love shoot. Uh -huh. uh, so there is a lot of opportunities like that, a lot of opportunities. And Noah. The National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's not uncommon for scuba divers to start as a professional scuba divers and then jump into the scientific programs and go with NOAA and do cleanups and do um, tagging programs, mm -hmm. turtles. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of opportunities yeah. that you can tag along. I mean, we can talk about that. Yeah. All day. And as far as, um, you know, formal, training that's offered either through Jax or uh, through PADI. Um, a lot of PADI's project aware programs, for example, the Dive Against Degree program, um, part of that curriculum is to conduct a cleanup and then to submit your data to project aware because they are keeping track of, you know, the quantity and the nature of the rubbish that is found by all of their participants around the world. So um, they're trying to, you know, get data on what's going on in our ocean. And by teaching that particular specialty, you get to participate in that process. Um, so there are definitely some, you know, formalized programs through PADI that do that. And then of course, once you get into the world of diving and professional diving and meet people, um, then you get called on to, you know, tag hammerheads with uh, Air Force pilots. <laughs> <laughs> they were not the Air Force pilots, they were the Air Force, Royal Air Force. Uh-huh, okay. What's that question of it? Um, oh, Robert in the chat says he uh, took the manta ray diver course with Keller in 2019, and he's the one that put his hand on an urchin. Oh, Robert, I remember you. <laughs> Keller tells that story all the time, Robert. <laughs> Sorry about the urchin. Yeah. Oh, a Hawaiian tattoo. I hope it's healed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, I think we've probably covered the whole science uh, tie-in pretty yeah. thoroughly. Um, Making a living as a paddy pro. Yep. Can be done. Okay. <laughs> Look at us. Uh, I've been a professional scuba diver since 2004. 
2010 for me. 2004. So he's been a um, scuba diver, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 19 years. Uh -huh. 19 years as a professional scuba diver. And hey, I'm here. I'm wearing new shorts. Oh. So I'm doing good. No holes in your shirt? No holes in my shirt. Looking good. And then, uh, you know, we talked about these earlier. You know, there is so many opportunities. So on that slide over there, there was over 6,600 paddy dive centers and resorts across the world. Right. And so if you're thinking that, oh, you know, whatever place in the world you want to go on school dive, there are opportunities. Yeah. And if you have other skills, you know, if you're the kind of person who likes to tinker with engines, if you're the kind of person who wants to learn more about doing repairs to dive gear, um, if you're interested in becoming a boat captain, um, if you are uh, interested in kids programs, you know, there's just a lot that you can bring to bear besides just going diving. So yeah. many, you know, if you've got other arrows in your quiver, they'll be useful. Definitely. And then that's, that's, you know, at the very beginning, we talk about this. You know, if you cannot be in the water that day, there's still other skills that you can use to make yourself useful out of the water. Mm -hmm. and just like what you mentioned, you know, compressor, tanks, mm -hmm. uh, equipment, all of these other stuff. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of opportunities. Staying in the, just the recreational diving, moving into the technical diving, Technical diving is becoming very popular. On the last week, we had three rebreather divers yeah. coming diving with us. So that is a huge market that is opening up for technical divers. You know, go deep, go longer, doing yeah. things like that. And then um, everything, I think, you know, you make your decisions and then you plan, okay, do I want to do this? And how much do I want to get out of this mm -hmm. life? Yeah, so in the chat, we're getting a few specific questions okay. about things like, can you live in Kona and support yourself? And is there a regular demand for dive professionals in Kona? Um, and I'll take that, that last question first. There is a very big demand for dive professionals in Kona, um, especially post-COVID. Um, our industry, like many industries, is um, still working to come back to the same level of staffing as we had pre-COVID. Um, and there are job openings galore in our industry, just as there are in many other industries in Hawaii right now. And even, uh, even in a non-post-COVID world, Kona is a town where people come to dive. So there is often opportunity um, to get a job as a dive professional here. Um, even during the slower seasons, diving is always happening here. There's always a need for, um, for professionals. So yes, I would say, um, I mean, I, I support myself in the dive industry. This is my nine to five um, and it has been for a decade. And, you know, I support myself and my cat very happily. Um, <laughs> I'm not trying to raise a family of four, but um, I am living happily in Kona, um, working in the dive industry, and many people do it. And uh, earlier, I said 18 years, 19 years doing this. I traveled the world. So one day I decided, hey, you know, I want to go and try Mexico. I never live in Mexico. I want to work there. And then I moved to Mexico. I live there. And work over there i got the opportunity to move to hawaii so yeah it has worked for me mm -hmm. i don't own a private jet that is true yet no not true. yet i'm working on it uh, but yeah i mean it's just like earlier you know I, I mentioned you choose what you really want and you make it happen mm -hmm. just how much effort you want to put it but yeah 19 years i'm still here Keller, Keller's been a diver for since like 1989 or exactly. 88 there was or something no, like that. Uh, and he has a car. And, and has, three children. Three children. Have all attended college. Wow. Look at that. <sighs> okay. So it can be done. <laughs> and then um, just really quick, I was talking to a good friend of mine from a different dive shop. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about it. And he just asked me crazy yesterday. He's like, do you know any dive instructors that want to get a job? And I was like, 
I do because we are starting an IDC in January. So we're going to have brand new instructors that are super eager to get a job. So the opportunities are out, out there. And not just from Jax. I can contact me earlier uh, directly and I can give you the name of this other company that's also looking. So and I'm pretty sure everybody's looking around. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Okay. Um, yeah. And if you're, if people sometimes move through the dive industry into other disciplines, um, like conservation, like research, um, that sort of thing. So uh, it's, it's a good stepping stone to that sort of um, career, if that's what you're after. Um, it's a good second career. Yes, second career. Or part-time career. Um, I mean, we have people on staff who are former FBI agents, who are former attorneys, who have had careers in education, um, so if that's the stage that in your life that you're at, it's also a very nice option. Yeah, I um, taught a class in IDC to this person. He became an instructor, was teaching, he was very happy, found a girlfriend, got married, and girlfriend is like, I don't want to be here in Hawaii anymore. They end up living in Texas. <laughs> Not a lot of diving in Texas. However, he had to stop his scuba diving job he took a real job somewhere else. However, uh, as a second job or as a part-time job, he joined the, um, the fire department. Oh, interesting. Yeah, huh. as, a, as a rescue diver, helping the fire department on rescues around the lakes hmm. and rivers in Texas, doing, a, it's not a very nice, but somebody has to do it, doing search recovery, and recovery, search and recovery sure, yeah. for objects, people. Um, but that's something, you know. And yeah, if that was, interests you. He was, you know, not happy to move, but love takes you somewhere else. And he followed love, and then he found part of the love in doing rescue as well. Yeah. So, lots really, of things. It really is surprising. Yeah, if you want um, an example of the kind of job opportunities that are available, Patty, one of the wonderful resources that patty maintains for its members is a job board where any patty dive center can advertise for opportunities they have available or if you're you know a free you know a free agent so to speak and you're looking for a job you can post to that job um, and it's kind of a matchmaking for employers and people looking to be employed um, in the dive industry you know and some of these jobs are also seasonal seasonal it's true you know so you leave you love um, snow Right. Hey, be in Colorado during the winter season. Be a uh, go down the snow hill instructor. How you call that? Ski instructor. A ski instructor. There you go. Ski instructor. Uh, and then when there is no more snow, move here and work as an instructor. Not necessarily here, but go to a warm place mm -hmm. during summer. Be a dive instructor, and then your next thing. So opportunities out there. Yeah, that kind of um, lifestyle appeals to you. But why here? Why do your training in Hawaii? Um, all kinds of great reasons. I mean, let's start with the first one. Yeah, weather. the obvious one. <laughs> yes. Uh, I was mentioning we are in winter. Oh my God, it's winter. The water is 78. Mm -hmm. The air, go, the air temperature down. is 80 if it's cloudy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you can find here on Big Island nice weather. I should not mention year round. You know, we don't have the low season, the high season. It gets a little lower, you know, not a lot of people, not a lot of tourism. Mm -hmm. But on those times, what do we do? We go diving for there. fun. We all oh, <laughs> go diving for fun. Debbie. We go diving for fun, <laughs> but we clean the boats. Yes, yes, you know, So there's a lot of things that we do to keep us busy diving for fun. You remember? Yeah. It's an important part of the job. Yeah, there's uh, good weather. There's excellent marine life here. Um, you know, the I'm sure you've heard the phrase that the ocean is a desert. And um, Hawaii is an oasis in the middle of a very, very big desert. So all kinds of things cruise by here. Humpbacks, mm -hmm. whale sharks, hammerheads, um, tiger sharks, um, orcas, um, uh, pilot whales. All of that plus all the resident ones. All the resident ones. And because we are so isolated, so many of our species are endemic 
found only here in Hawaii. About 25% of our vertebrates are endemic and about 35% of our invertebrates, which means it's not just a multiband butterfly fish, it's a Hawaii only multiband butterfly fish. Um, one of the great things about diving here. Things that you can only find here. You know, it's just so beautiful. When we have bad visibility, what is it, like 60 feet? Oh, okay, on a really crummy day, maybe 40, which is still about 30 feet better than some places in this <laughs> world. <laughs> and we do have year-round tourism, and we also have a year-round local population that wants to dive. We certainly have local residents who come out and dive with us. And now that you have decided that, yes, Big Island is the place, now why Jack's diving? Look. Ah, oh, yes, I love this question. I think the first thing that comes in mind, I just turn around, is like, look, you have a Shannon. And this guy, and David. David. Yeah. So you get two course directors for the price of one. It's like a BOGO. Buy one, get one for free. Mm -hmm. There you go. Between the two of us, we have, let me see, 19 years plus 12 years, 39, 40, 41, like 41, 40 ish years of experience in the dive industry. And we are current and actively working in the dive industry. It's not like we come out of semi retirement three times a year to teach an IDC. We're here in the dive industry teaching every day. You can ask us, when's the last time you taught a rescue class? When's the last time you taught a dive master, open water, did DSDs? The answer is always going to be this, very recently. This, if not maybe weeks. <laughs> yeah. Then that's it. And the exactly. only thing is not just us. There is a team of instructors, master scuba divers, IDC staff instructors, open water scuba instructors that are behind out there to give you that support as well. So it's not just us, it's the whole team that all together, I mean, 300 years of experience, if we counted Jeff mm -hmm. and yeah. Keller. Yeah, we've got, a, we've got a really deep bench. And uh, our IDC candidates are a reflection of that. Um, everyone who's ever taken an IDC with us has become an instructor, has had success at the IE. Success rate. Absolutely. And our facilities are second to none. We're, we're the only dive uh, shop in town with an on-site pool and classroom and gear storage, as well as a full dive retail and repair service. Um, literally everything you need, we've got it. And it's all under one roof. It's all in-house. Um, we, you know, we operate five dive boats. We have uh, a fleet of vehicles uh, to take shore dives. Um, yeah, the transportation to and from all of your dives in open water while you're in the IDC and transportation to and from the instructor exam if it's on island, all of that is taken care of. You really don't have to do anything but show up. Yep, you have tanks, you have weights. We're going to provide all of that to you. All of the materials are included in the price of the course. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, this is something really cool. Once you become an instructor, this is something that a lot of people is like, oh, I'm an instructor. Oh, what, what do I do? I do? do? <laughs> How do I do this? Hey, no worries. You're going to have, if you have the time and you have the willing, stay here two weeks and shadow our instructors. Mm -hmm. So you can go behind, go join a class and shadow the instructors. So you see the real life instructors doing real life teaching. Yep. So you get a lot of examples to emulate um, you can see some real students and see how real instructors, um, you know, solve problems and create learning opportunities. And it gives you a chance to get inspired to develop your own teaching style. We'll give you all of those tools during the IDC, but actually bringing them to bear um, is easier when you've seen a few other people's teaching styles as well. So this is something that we've incorporated into our IDC uh, recently is this opportunity to have almost like an internship, a, a chance to learn, not on the job because you're not working, but to observe professionals on the job. Learn from the professionals in the real life instructor. And now we just are talking about perks. We added an extra perks for our IDC. Oh. We added the instructor, Nitrox instructor certification. Right. Oh yeah, right. I remember that meeting when we added those things. It was so exciting. Nitrox. O2 and equipment specialty. Yep, exactly. So those three will be added to your class. So once you become an instructor, you have all your ratings, you're ready to go out there, and then you have three specialties that you can actually start teaching. And those are very useful. Mm -hmm. 
specialties and, and popular. Popular and they're dry specialties. So, um, you know, if the weather is bad, if the water is cold, uh, if, if you have a cold, if you have a cold, um, you know, these are popular specialties because um, they can be taught dry and you can, you know, issue certifications dry. You can offer them to students, you know, on the day before they're flying home and it doesn't influence their um, no fly time. Um, it offers you flexibility. It's a question over here. Okay. Is the shadow option open for a separate time or next visit to the island? Oh, that is interesting. I don't know if we have a hard and firm answer to that. I think we were envisioning, you know, contiguous with the IDC itself, or can we give people an IOU to come back and do that? That is a good question, which I do not have an immediate answer for. It's me. Uh, Charles. Charles. Okay, yeah. Charles. But we'll, we'll figure out uh, what the answer to that is, and um, we'll be sure to uh, send you an email, Charles, and tell you um, what the upshot of that is. You know, I love about this Q&A that, we think that we have the questions for, the answers for everything. Right. And here come Charles and we were like, oh, ah, I don't have the answer for that. Yeah, I will, I will technically go on record as probably yes, but we, sh we, we haven't had a specific discussion around that as an education team, uh, including the owner of the company. So before we, I commit to anything, we'll need to have that <laughs> discussion. But that is, uh, that is a good question. Yeah, okay. Some of us don't live in paradise full time. These That's are true. true facts. These are true facts. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll figure out the answer to that and we'll be sure to get back to you, Charles. All right, let's see what's next. What courses do you have planned? Oh, that's a okay, question. for 2023. Okay, so our 2023 dates I believe are published on the website. Correct, yeah. Yes, our professional courses for dive master and instructor. I don't have them memorized here, um, but uh, our 2023 uh, professional courses are published. Um, and uh, at least for the dive master class, um, it's also possible to arrange that class um, by custom on a custom schedule. Um, so we have our published courses, then, um, you know, if none of those work for you, it's usually uh, possible to do a custom schedule. Um, the IDC, it's a little harder to do a custom schedule, um, but if you had a friend who also wanted to, for example, do an IDC with you, we could arrange a custom schedule for, um, you know, for two or so. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to the next question, is there an IE after every IDC on the island? So this is why we try to publish our dates as far in advance as we can and encourage people to plan around them because Patty will send an examiner to the big island if we have four candidates. So it's to everyone's advantage to try to get as many people as possible into a single IDC um, so that we can you know, tell Patty, right, we have six candidates, please send an instructor for the date that we need. And they will do that. Cause there is an instructor, there is a, an instructor examiner uh, who lives on Oahu. So it's a, you know, he just comes over for a couple of days, conducts the exam. It's very simple. Um, but if we don't have enough people here, then Patty will ask people to come to Oahu so that they can get, you know, everyone from the whole state together in one place do it, you know, one time, you know, get all 16 or 20 or however many people are doing it um, and uh, conduct the IE on Oahu, which we've definitely sent candidates to Oahu in the past. Yep. They, they too were successful. It's just that we weren't able to drive them to the beach. <laughs> and then the way that we are doing this is uh, we, um, we try to... Manage the dates. Yes. So like closer. By. Sorry to interrupt you, David. Go ahead, go ahead. I want you to finish that thought. But also, I should mention that it doesn't have to be Oahu. Patty conducts IEs in various locations around the world. So you could go home to California. You could go home to the Great Lakes. You could go home to Texas. And you could definitely do an IE there after completing your training here. All of those things are possible. Um, but when we have enough people here on the Big Island, then they will send us an examiner, which is always our goal. Um, most of the time we manage to realize it, we don't always. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, and then um, just like connection, what you were saying, we try to schedule our IBC that if we don't have enough 
candidates, when they go to Honolulu, which is the closest one on Maui, is in between days. So it's not like, oh, I have to wait two weeks before the IE and everything is going to be gone and forgotten. It's between three days, if not, yeah, it's about yeah. three, four days where you can go to the next island and complete it over there as well. Yeah. You know, I like that point that you mentioned about going around. It's not just here in Hawaii. You can go to the mainland, you know, doing it on mainland, or any other countries. They do it in Brazil, Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Thailand. Thailand, oh, nice. Yeah. I'd like to go to Thailand. Belize. Belize, believe it or not. Right? Yeah, so we, our goal, of course, is always to have the IE here if we can, but even if we can't conduct the IE here, you can conduct the IE, to go attend an IE elsewhere. You have lots of options. Yeah. Now this is our time for questions. I think we love to talk. Oh, I, I know, know we talk do. about fishes and scuba diving and time flies. Um, now, if you have a friend that is like, oh, I really wanted to see this Q and A, but I couldn't make it because I had somebody coming or whatever, whatever. We are recording this. Yes. This time it is working. Let me check. Yes, it, it definitely says it's recording. It's still working. We tried last time and it didn't so, work out. <laughs> this time we think it worked. <laughs> you wake up tomorrow and you forgot everything we tell you. Mm -hmm. This is recorded. Yeah, or if you just find us so soothing that you want to like put us on play and then fall asleep to the dulcet tones of our voice at night, <laughs> you can. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, yeah, and then questions, you know, you can throw us the questions right now. Mm -hmm. If you're still thinking about it and you maybe tomorrow in a couple of days, you probably say, oh, I forgot about asking this. Contact us. Yeah. We're going to put the, our contact information on the screen right now. And that would be the best way to contact. You can throw us an email, uh, give us a call. We have a fax machine as well, <laughs> just in case. We, you can send us a fax machine. I'm pretty sure Joe knows how to work on the fax. Uh, Joe sure. Lily. Yeah. Um, Old Joe, not tall Joe. Uh, so, Ginny, do you want to go to the next slide so we can see our contact information? And then uh, we have one question. What is that question, uh, Shannon? Oh, let me see. Are custom instructor courses available for groups of two or more? Yes. Yep. We can do that. Um, we would prefer not to do an IDC for a single student. Um, for a couple of reasons, mostly to do with the fact that it's not really the best way to learn. The group dynamic is way better. I certainly have conducted one person IDCs and that person is a successful and talented instructor who went on to have a delightful career. Um, but man, a one person IDC, it's, it's not, it's challenging and it's not what I would recommend. But if you've got a buddy, then two is our minimum for sure. There are certain dates. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, we come into Christmas, we oh, get yeah. super, super busy. Shannon gets requests all the time. <laughs> I get once in a while. Um, so if you're thinking about something like that, just send us an email, give us a call, and we definitely try to arrange something for you guys. Yeah, we'll work with you to find dates that work for you and for us. Um, so that is our email address over there, pro at jackstabbinglocker.com. Mm -hmm. um, Send us an email if you have any questions, if you would like uh, to have um, a picture of us. <laughs> or if you'd just like to speak more, you know, we could do a video chat with you. Um, you can, we can speak on the phone. Um, you can schedule a time to drop by the shop if you are on island. Um, all of these things, just let us know. Guys, this has been very exciting. Um, I always get super nervous before and at the end I was like, wow, that was amazing. So thank you very much for joining us. We are looking forward to see you guys very soon. As Shannon said, give us a call, send us an email, and then we can talk in person. Yeah. We can do all of these. David and I became course directors because we like teaching the IDC. So we are happy that is true. to make that happen for you. That is true. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I'm really pleased. It was so well attended. And uh, thank you, Jeannie, for all of your technical assistance. Yay, Jeannie. <laughs> happy holidays, everybody. Yes, happy holidays, everybody. Bye-bye.